we are live. The window, the window is not open, which I was about to see. Spoilers in this video. The curtains have been opened so that I can keep an eye on. It's it's. There's been some rain today, and just in case there's going to be any thunder and lightning, I'm probably going to have to stop recording. Which so I really hope that doesn't happen because I really want to talk about this movie. Welcome to Spider-Man Far From Home Thoughts Film. Now, this contains spoilers, including four earlier entries in this franchise. I will be spoiling Endgame in this video, so if you haven't watched Endgame, you know, and also this, but, you know, I, uh, yeah. And it's a long video, but there are time codes, different sections in the description box. Now, my own film critic rating for this. See, I keep, it's, it's difficult to choose between 8, 9, and 10. I guess ultimately I can't quite give it a ten. There, are, there are just there are a couple of things, but is it? Yeah, I. It's yeah, it's a it's a nine, and same for my personal rating, nine out of ten for both. Now. One thing that I was wondering about this movie is whether someone could hypothetically go into this without having watched Endgame. You know, Infinity War and Endgame, there are probably there 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 are a bunch of people who were understandably scared off by how big they were. You know, if you haven't watched all the MCU movies leading up to them, then you might be lost. And as you know, and yeah, those people might have skipped those and want to watch this. Ultimately, yes, you can follow this movie without having watched Avengers 3 and 4. Just be aware that it does spoil the, the, some of the major events, you know, but yeah. It's, it's a good idea to have watched at least Homecoming. But yeah, if if you you can just watch Homecoming and Far From Home. If you don't want to watch anything else MCU, you can follow these two movies. You you get enough information in the movies themselves. Now, and like Spider-Man Homecoming, this comes out very you know, close to my birthday, so it's like an amazing birthday present. I I I I don't want this to end. I want a Spider-Man movie to come out on every single one of my birthdays. I I I can't put into words how happy I am. This this I've been wanting great Spider-Man movies since the year 1999. And yeah, you know, eventually, eventually we got there and I've been wanting a movie about Mysterio since the year 1999 and I'm pretty I'm glad that it took them 20 years because I really don't think they could have done him justice until very recently you know if he had been the villain in Homecoming that could also have worked but that movie would have to be completely different it's perfect that Spider-Man is in this place that is so yeah you know far from home physically geographically speaking and he finds it just the 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 sequence where Spider Man oh, yeah the two sequences where Spider Man is completely trapped within Mysterio's illusions are pitch perfect. They are exactly what I wanted when I read the comics. They are you know just abs absolutely perfect. So I am gonna go directly into. The first section entitled Notes Taken While Watching. Now, briefly on the 3D, I think it adds depth. And, you know, I. I it wasn't as. Like, when, when you see Mysterio's. You know, I, I don't. I wouldn't say that it is as, like, absolutely necessary as for some of the other movies that were used 3D really well. But. I, I would say go for 3D. 
Now, without end credits, I think this movie was about an hour and 58 minutes, but I, I'm not 100% certain. And if you, you know, with unless the building is on fire, do not leave the theater before you've watched both the mid credit scene and the post credit scene. I was so taken aback by them that I completely forgot to note at you know how how long the the end credits actually were to, which which I almost always I'm, I'm almost never so shook but I was the yeah so we open with you know Fury Mexico and the what's it called yeah we see we see the the sandman type creature and you know yeah the fury, fury mentions you know the the people said that that hurricane had a face yeah but you know in a stressful situation that you know people see things and i have to admit when i before it, before it was revealed that mysterio wasn't who he said he was i thought that you know, there's also it's it's a it's an inter internet theory that maybe Fury would turn out to be what's it called chameleon. It's actually yeah, I don't think I didn't see anyone guess that it was actually Talos, but that is that is a clever you know it's it's yeah you know secret invasion kind of thing. Excuse me. The the. Yeah, I and and now we now we're left wondering has has Talos been posing as Fury since like it, I saw I think on IMDb uh, in trivia someone said you know maybe he's been maybe Talos has been posing as Fury since the end of the first Avengers movie since now Fury got the team together and he had faith in the Avengers so. Every single time we've seen Fury since then, it's been Talos since the, the, that's, I, <laughs> the English language, as well as any other language that I've ever heard of, cannot fully express how much I love the MCU. With, with just, with so just, just a. I mean, it, it. From when we first see Talos in the in the post credit scene, to when that entire bit is over, what is it? One minute, two minutes. But because it's Talos posing as Fury, and because Fury is now in this. You know, first it looks like he's on a beach, but then no, he's. It's like a. He's he's on like a scroll vessel. So he may have been there since yeah, you know, I mean if that's that's wild. He the, the yeah. I really love comic books and I love the way the MCU just yeah, anyway, anyway. Before it was revealed that Mysterio was fooling I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna call him Nick Fury and her Maria Hill even though I know that they're Talos and Sovereign in this movie but before that I thought that or did, yeah yeah I I was thinking we don't see what exactly happens we just see Mysterio arrive, and the you know, and he says, "Who who are you?" And or did he say, "Who the hell are you?" I, I forget. And you know, it's PG thirteen. They can get away with a couple of swears. And and then you have. I, w I was wondering if it was going to turn out that someone else was posing as Fury and Hill and that the last time they actually did anything was when they arrived in Mexico and then 
Mysterio came upon them and realized I I could use their identities for my own benefits, but I probably couldn't trick them. And you know, but instead it was that he tricked them. Now I quite I I I didn't know how it was gonna work, but I love that the fishbowl is just this sort of you know he can he can you know it's on off like with Spidey's helmet and some versions of the of the Iron Man you know some some of them just open up to show his face and some of them just completely go on you know yeah and and certain of the Black Panther masks and and such I I I yeah. I really love the the I, I I knew that the MCU could make it work, but I I'm still so happy to have seen Mysterio the way the exact way he's supposed to look. Just, you know, a couple of the colors are a little darker toned than the comic, but you know, if if you don't know, Google you know you look at what he looks like in the comic and then look at the movie he just yeah they they got all the all the details and the it's just it's amazing now but but yeah it cuts away from the fight and then we get the logo i have to admit i did not realize the the you know essentially we get the the you know the the audience does not see the fight against the I, I don't I think I'm inter I'm going to sometimes refer to him as Sandman and sometimes as the the Earth Elemental and and the others you know Hydroman Water Elemental and yeah the the yeah you you that clip you see in the trailer of the you know the Sandman thing rising and then you know Hill firing a couple of bullets at, that really is all you see in the movie. And, you know, for a while it seems like we won't see the, the air-based one at all. And then when we do see him, you know, the audience, and that again, they, they cut it well for the trailer. When you see it in the trailer, it looks real. But when you, by the time the scene happens in the movie, you know that that's not, you know, it, it's just, it's an illusion by Mysterio. But, yeah, when you, when you just watch the trailer... It, you know, I mean, again, a lot of people, of course, knew that, you know, they didn't know the exact details necessarily, but, yeah, it's Mysterio, it's an illusion, you know, there's, there might be some real damage done, but he has means of, of that, you know, it doesn't mean that there's actually these, you know, magic elemental, these witches to, to, you know, as the, I, I like that they made, made that a thing, when, when, when the, when the teacher first said it's witches, I didn't realize. I mean, they used it at least thrice, right? You know, first he's like, as a man of science, yeah, I, I you know, I'm certain it's witches, you know. And, and it was one of the, welcome, welcome to the second dark age. Welcome to the new dark ages. And, yeah. And we get an in memoriam of Tony, Steve, Nat, and Vision. And, yeah, I, I, which, you know, yeah, if you haven't watched Endgame, you know, Infinity War and Endgame, you know, yeah, those are, those are four heroes that are now gone, although I, you know, there, there's a, I've already forgotten, I think it was a Watchmojo video that talks about, you know, does that mean that, you know, is, is Captain America dead? when this movie happens, even though it's so short after Endgame, or is it just, you know, they, they faked his death, they, they claim that he's dead, so that this poor old man can live out the, his last remaining days in, you know, with, without people constantly hounding him. Now, I have to admit, I quite like, I think some people had already guessed we'd see this, some, some people had said, like, this has to happen, but I don't think we saw it in, in Endgame at all, at least. The part where, you know, oh, well, you know, some some of them just suddenly disappeared, and we, you know, we, we see some disappearing and turning into dust. 
and then five years later, they reappeared, and then just chaos as this, like, like a basketball game or something, and, like, the people who were dusted appear in the exact same spot, and we also, the, the sad sack teacher now tells, you know, Peter, oh, you know, my wife pretended to be dusted, but really, she had run off with her lover. We had a fake funeral, but where the funeral was real, because I really thought she had that, you know. And and you know what? I got us a dual headset, dual stick headset. We can watch the video I made of you know memorizing. It. Just <laughs> I I really, really, really hope that this that 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 teacher is in the third movie because he is so funny, and it's just not it's. It's unreal how funny just this this teacher and and the other teacher in this and the and the students just so funny and such just yeah and we get the report and Betty still doesn't really get along with Jason and just yeah and Peter explains his plan for we end up dating MJ and and Ned says you know Europeans love Americans and half of them are women and the and, and I like the you know oh, she she really loves the Dahlia because of the murder it's just of course it's because of the murder it's not just, you know just uh, it's a beautiful thought no no she. It's because of the murder and just yeah, and yeah, MJ, MJ is still hilarious. When I did my video on Homecoming, I said I don't know Zendaya from anything else. I think that's how you pronounce it. Apologies if I'm wrong. But every every single thing she does in Homecoming is unbelievably hilarious. Every single it's sometimes it's just a gesture. Like when, when, uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure if YouTube has like a policy about rude gestures, but yeah, when, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna act it out, but you know, when they, you know, the homecoming, you know, she does, you know, first she's like, ah, hi, and then she turns her hand around and uh, yeah. And like when she, when she does the, the drawing of of Peter sat and and like turns it over to so he can see and like looks at it and like hmm. just the if every single thing she says and the way she says them every it's just and and you know he to be one hundred percent brutally honest not every single thing in this that she did or said was funny. The ones that were funny were hilarious, but the ones that weren't funny were really cute and charming. So yes, I still I love every single thing that just I. There's there are so many characters in these two movies where I'm just like, can we just can we just make like a trilogy just focusing on these characters? I don't even need there to be super heroics in these movies. I just want to see more of them. You know, that's, yeah, it's, it's, that's a pretty good sign. It's getting dark. Now, I, uh, you know, we have Aunt May and Spider-Man for charity, and I, yeah, you know, Aunt May is still, like, adorkable, and just, yeah, you know, excuse me. I, yeah, I, I really, really enjoy this characterization of her the the yeah and and you know Peter's like super nervous so you know when she, she steps aside and Peter's supposed to walk up and he just he just kind of stands there like frozen for the and, and then he walks up and then and we got the feedback because it's just I, I think it's just congrat con congratulations it's contractually obligated you have to do a feedback joke feedback joke if there's someone who's nervous Who's gonna be speaking? At, there's gonna be feedback. Just, just yeah. And I, I like the you know afterwards like 
she, you know, she's like, what was it that, like, you know, I, I was really, really nervous. I thought I was going to be stiff and, you know, but, but I wasn't, you were stiff. <laughs> And and it's like no no it's it's okay it's okay I'm just I'm just being completely honest and you know it, it worked out and Aunt May is flirting with Happy and Fury calls and we have the whole ghost thing thing and he says you know I I will call Fury and then you know once he's walked off swing he says after the trip is that a can can he I mean, if someone if someone calls but it says like hidden number, can you call them back just like that? Anyway, Let's see. and yeah, Peter gets some anxiety when they to, you know ask questions about the Avengers. Are you the new Iron Man? And what what if something happens? And and he sees Tony uh, under on the wall. I didn't think so much about it while watching the movie, but afterwards, that is a little bit like Iron Man 3, when Tony himself has a panic attack. You know, the, the, yeah, because that's also like he's overwhelmed. I, I wouldn't quite say, it, it doesn't look to me like Peter had quite, had, had a panic attack, but it is reminiscent. And... Yeah, you know, the, the, the pressure on him is, and the, the Peter Tingle, I saw one reviewer who said, you know, he, he burned it really didn't like that. I don't know, I, I thought it was kind of funny. And, and the, like, Aunt May, you know, and, and his, please stop saying Tingle, May. And let's see. And we meet Brad on the plane. I I quite enjoyed the the you know Flash is trying to mess with Peter, so he's like you know oh this is this it's just like a bus, only it flies over the the poor people neighborhood instead of driving through it like you're used to, and then MJ's like. He actually blipped out, so he's 16 years old, not 21. You know, so just, he shouldn't be drinking, and just immediately, without just right away, the stewardess grabs the the glass. He's like, I, she's like, I don't even know this girl. And then Brad was like, classic MJ. Just, I really love that. That's like, you know, because yeah, you're. You know the audience is going like, yeah, you you know, you you go MJ and and Peter's like, you know, you know, taking a little pleasure in that, and then in walks this, you know, and and the audience is like, who's this guy? And and just I I really it's it's such a perfect introduction, and then Ned is like. He used to be that this little skinny kid, but you know he he aged five years while we didn't age at all. So now you know and and just again that that has to happen. That must have happened because of the blip. Because it was fifty percent. It wasn't it. It wasn't a hundred percent. It was fifty percent of everyone, and it was random. So it's not like it wiped out their entire school, but half of it. You know or some some yeah. And 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 the <laughs> you know Peter tells Ned you you have to get you know if 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 I yeah if if like you know get convince him to to swap places so that I'll be sitting next to MJ and Ned goes up. And and tries to you know, and the the let's see. it's just it's it's really funny how the whole 
because I I didn't see I didn't see where it was going. I you know it's it's a it's a it's teen love in a teen comedy. So there's gonna it's gonna get messed up somehow. We know that, and we know what Peter's hoping will happen, but we don't know exactly how. So you know he walks up and and you're just hope you know I mean it sounds it sounds decently plausible you know okay and and I mean it's almost all also like a please take the hint you know kind of like you know. I mean, Ned. If if we if we remove all the specific words, basically, Ned goes up and asks if Betty could switch places with Peter. So right there, that's you know, Betty. She's a smart girl. We know that. We we haven't spent a lot of time with her up to this point. I'm glad she had she she had as much to do in this movie as she did. I, she's really charming. She's really funny. But she's clearly a smart girl. So the moment she hears that, instead of saying out loud, Peter is allergic to perfume, she should internally monologue, Peter wants to sit next to Mary Jane. And at that point, fair enough, maybe she, you know, goes through some kind of like, if evaluate, you know, would MJ like that, or would she prefer I stay put? To be fair, maybe that's it. Maybe she's really quick with, her and she and she's like trying to call BS on a story like MJ wouldn't like me moving. If I if I point out that the story doesn't make sense, he's gonna back down. Maybe that's it, you know. But you know, they they yeah they they go go over a little bit, and then the teacher hears. And he's like, oh, that's that's no joke. It's gonna it's gonna break out. Oh, I know this. You know what? We're we're doing this. We're you know, and and everybody switches places, and then like, who ends up sitting next to MJ? But Brad, and he's got a dual plug for the you know, and we can watch movies together. Only if they're what was it she said? Only if they're incredibly funny. Or really depressing, or something like that, you know. And and you see, ah, it's just enjoying watching together. And let's see. I wrote the teacher asleep. I I don't often remember that. Was Raf Raf. Raphael Chastain was he on the on the f from College Humor? Was he on the jet? It's like right at the start of that scene, like a guy sits down in the seat. Was that him? I think before we, I, th I think even before like we see Flash with the wine, I'm pretty sure right at the start, it's probably not him. I'm probably just maybe I, I've been watching a lot of College Humor lately. Maybe that's it. I just feel like he looked at him a lot, looked a lot like him. Now, and the, sorry, thinking of, there was something else, anyway, and Betty and Ned together are just really hilarious, and, and genuinely cute together, like, the, I, that, yeah, that was the thing, like, so, yeah, who ends up sitting next to each other? But Ned and Betty, or uh, Bed or Nettie, so, you know, whatever exactly the 